Welcome to CS Week Marketplace, third Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern webinar series. CS Week Marketplace offers fresh perspectives and strategies presented monthly by knowledge specialists from the Conference 37 Platinum and Gold sponsors. I am John Sild, and I'm with CS Week, and I'll be your moderator today. CS Week and Conference 38 will be held from May 5th through the 9th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center in San Antonio. Registration is available online at www.csweek.org. Today's program is CIS Implementation Case Study Featuring of Vista Utilities. Attendees are encouraged to upload questions in the Q&A panel as they arise. However, all questions will be held until after the presentation for the Q&A segment. Please address your questions to the All icon and not just the speaker. Please note, today's presentation will not be available online. We are pleased to have Victoria Weber and Patrick Deaver with us today. Vicki Weber is currently the Director of Customer Strategic Projects for Avista Utilities. She serves as Avista's Executive Sponsor for the utilities New Oracle CCMB and IBM Maximo Systems Installation. Vicki has 35 years of experience in the utility industry in various fields of electric, natural gas, and telecommunications. Also with us, we have Patrick Deaver. Pat is an Executive Director for Project Compass and Director of Application and System Programming for Avista Utilities. His current responsibilities include management for Avista's major customer service system and enterprise asset management, replacement project oversight of enterprise applica application architecture and data architecture, enterprise integration, application development and support. Pat has 18 years of experience in the software development area. We are pleased to have both Pat and Victoria, our Vicki, with us today, and I'm going to go ahead and toss the ball to them. Good morning. This is Vicki Weber. Good morning. This is Pat Dever. I'm going to get started with our slide deck this morning. And um, first of all, I just wanted to share on the CS Week Marketplace, there was um, information in regards to what this session will address. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that and as well as Pat will as we move through this. Uh, this is 125-year anniversary of this year, so it's been kind of an exciting year for us with our project as well as the company anniversary. We're headquartered in Spokane. We've got 32,000 square miles of service territory in Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. We've got um, 361 electric customers, 320,000 natural gas customers, and we have a non-regulated subsidiary, billing subsidiary called ECOBA. Okay, our next slide is, what is Project Compass? Well, that goes back to CS Week Marketplace, the question, what are the key business drivers leading to the decision to replace your legacy solution? When we started this, there were four primary drivers pushing the need for a new CSS work management system. The aging technology was one, 20 years old, a limited and declining support structure where many of our employees that built this legacy system are retiring. Costly and difficult enhancements. Having three state regulated utility commissions, we've had several workarounds we've had to do within our legacy system. The system is primarily a billing system instead of a customer-centric information system. And for us, that's really important to get more opportunity to improve our customer offerings. So we are replacing our work management system and our legacy billing system. Our work management system is IBM Maximo, and our billing system, of course, is Oracle CCMB. Okay. Okay, you'll see a Project Compass timeline, and you'll hear me refer, once again, to Project Compass throughout 
this um, slide deck we started in 2011 building a foundation and the first thing that we knew um, we would need is someone to help us along the procurement phase. So we did a, uh, an RFP in search of a consultant and um, our consultant during that procurement phase in 11 and 12 was Five Point. And as you can see, we split the project with our generation system on the Maximo side to go live in September of 2013 and then a third quarter go live in 2014 for Oracle CCMB and our asset management as well as transmission distribution on the um, electric side and gas. So this is the timeline that we're going to talk through at this um, stage of our project. So there were uh, multiple phases and we're going to start by talking about the procurement phase. Um, let's first, before we go to that, talk about the uh, technology alignment matrix. You can go to the next slide here. Uh, one more. Okay, so uh, the the systems uh, got a twenty is twenty years old, and, and our technology alignment uh, matrix will show the uh, the age of our systems and the two systems that. Uh, were in need of replacement is our was our customer service system, which was 20 years old, and our work and asset management system, which is also 20 years old. They were actually one system, uh, uh, both systems in one system. The uh, we we reviewed the options to replatform and extend the life of the current system, which resides on a mainframe, and we. Estimated that to be five to eight million dollars in costs. At that time, we were engaged in a consulting uh, arrangement with Booz and Company to look at uh, different options, and uh, they recommended instead of investing the uh, five to eight million in replatforming to extend the, the life of the current system, to go ahead and move forward with the new system. So that was a, uh, a driver that uh, helped us get through that. Uh, decision. The, um, uh, as Vicki uh, pointed out, the uh, skills uh, for supporting and maintaining our current system, which is based on COBOL and a language called Smalltalk, uh, those resources were nearing the age of retirement. We were fortunate enough to uh, make the decision to move forward where we still have a number of those resources working on the project, which is, is key to allowing us to move the data and the business processes from the old system into the new system. Next slide. Okay, so as you can see, this is a design um, for the foundation. And um, what I want to share is I think uh, these slides, unfortunately, are jumping around. They're not in the order that we originally put them in. I think we just went from slide 7 to 16. So um, I'm not sure if we want to reshuffle this deck for a second. And uh, there you go. Okay, so. We're back on track, and, and I'm sorry for that, but Pat will pick back up here because this is a good um, alignment on our technology that we used for our um, project. Yeah, this is when I mentioned the technology alignment matrix, this is what I was referring to. Uh, the left axis uh, talks about the uh, technology age, and the lower axis talks about the, uh, how well that software aligns to the business. And our avistautility.com external facing website was uh, relatively new. It's now about five years old. Uh, but that's why that's in that upper right quadrant. In the lower left quadrant, you can see there's two applications, CSS, which is our customer service system, and uh, Tracker, which is a work, mass, uh, work asset management system. And so these systems were targeted for replacement. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, too far. 
There you go. Okay, so as we as we talked about the uh, the uh, different phases, procurement being the first phase of this project that started in 2012-2013 uh, uh, timeline, and uh, these are the the main um, areas of that uh, process. Now, this is a process that Five Point, the consultants that we engaged, brought to us and and helped us through the process. This uh, this slide also represents uh, a slide that is, is presented to the steering committee each month to show where we are. Are we on schedule? Are we behind schedule? Uh, and so it's a good indicator for the steering committee to understand where we're at in the process. And so those are the uh, seven processes that we went through. We started the, uh, the procurement uh, in May of 2012 when we uh, engaged Five Point. Next slide. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah. So um, on our decision matrix, um, this was developed for from our procurement uh, consultant, and we what we did was um, we took the top three uh, procurers, and we went through an RFP, and first of all, what we did was have them come in and do an oral presentation. And then we um, set up a product demonstration in our auditorium where we uh, just put out a sandwich board in the hall and said, you know, if you want to come and see what these new products are going to look like, now's the time, and, and sent out a schedule. We had a team evaluation at the end of each demo where each person that attended, of course, went through and um, put, uh, you know, their comments and uh, added some scores up for us. And then we put a core team together to choose which product uh, would work best for our company. And then, uh, of course, on that procurement, which product the uh, procurer could represent the best. And then the team did an evaluation on that, and we so so selected um, our partner at that time. I think the key, one of the keys to that was you know, Vicki and I felt very strongly about change management on this project, and so getting more people involved in the decision up front allowed us to get buy-in and ownership of the decision, uh, which is going to pay dividends as we near the completion of the project. Okay, so the next slide will show you um, what we went through as far as making a decision. We, uh, this was the outcome. We either had a high score or a low score, and as you can see, our customer service representatives as well as billing and finance and all rated this product um, very high on customer satisfaction, ease of use, ease of use and um, the product roadmap that we went through, we saw that there was potential for us to the future to grow this product and meeting almost all of our business requirements as far as being an agile technology. So in the end, we took this to the steering committee with a very high score for uh, Oracle CCMD product. And the, uh, there, there were multiple products uh, involved in the selection. We, re, we uh, deferred to Gartner and uh, looked for the top vendors in this industry. Um, and, and that's kind of how we shortlisted those, but Oracle came out on top. Okay. On the next slide, um, we went through some initial planning, and, and this was a phased-in approach, and you can see this is basically a slide that you could use um, to plan your project, whether it's a one-, two-, or four-year project. There's specific time allocations in each phase, and you can see below um, with what some of the work that we put together that uh, we had several months in each phase uh, as far as stabilization. That time is prior to and after go live. And so there's a time frame there uh, that is pretty typical for an average project timeline or so we've seen to this point. Okay. The next, time I'll, the next slide I'll talk about best practices on the procurement. And really important um, 
for us was um, the selection of the procurement partner. That was a huge jump start for us, having someone that understood uh, you know, what our needs were and um, verbalizing them as far as RFP and um, webinars that we had with all of the vendors that um, we were looking at to provide this service for us. And some of the um, important uh, bullets here are to involve the business, and I talked a little bit about that earlier, to get everybody that's going to be impacted involved in these sessions. And you know, you've, one of the things that is hard to recognize is that the time that it takes to just do phase one and to evaluate and rank the proposals and um, put a priority there. Document your selection. We've had several audits throughout our project, both internal audits and external audits. And we've got manual after manual, and um, we'll talk a little later about our SharePoint website that we've put all of our documentation on. And you know, quite frankly, this was like building a brand new business. And at this point in time, um, we've got several phases that we go through several meetings, uh, a lot of documentation in order to arrive at solid decision making on this project. So the next phase uh, is going to be the design phase. We've just talked about the procurement phase. Uh, so we're going to move into the design phase. The next slide. Okay, so this, these are the uh, top ten uh, project risk factors as identified from Five Point. And these hold very true uh, based on our experience. So top uh, management commitment. Lack of that is uh, is sure to be a, a problem for the project. We're fortunate not, uh, fortunate to have a, a steering committee of five executives, which includes the president of the company, uh, that meet once a month, and they are very engaged and uh, um, uh, committed to the project. Misunderstanding of requirements. We felt that uh, through the five point process of procurement, we identified, I think, over 3,000 uh, requirements and 200 business processes. So we felt that that was uh, very well done. Not managing change. As I mentioned earlier, change management is uh, and still continues to be uh, Vicki and I top priority. Uh, it is uh, so important to engage the company and the key stakeholders in the process and the decisions that are made. Failure to gain user commitment falls into that same category as change management. Lack of effective project management skills. As utilities, we, we all have many projects, and so we all feel that we understand project management very well. But we had an executive sponsor, uh, Don Kopczynski, our Vice President of uh, Distribution and, and Operations. Uh, insist that we reach out uh, and hire a project manager that has done these types of projects before. So we engaged Black and Veatch to hire uh, a resource. His name is Greg Jones, uh, very skilled in large project management. And he actually leads our program management office. And under him, we have 11 project managers. Uh, representing various aspects of the project. So that's very important. Uh, user involvement, uh, that's key. That's the, uh, the change management, puzzle of the change management. Uh, expectations, uh, you know, the, the old system does certain things the way we wanted to do it. We built it ourselves. The new system does things differently, more, more standard. And so setting expectations uh, was important. And yes, we have had surprises where we've had to uh, do some things. Uh, the extensions um, possibly could be considered customizations, but they're really just an extension of the project that is specific to your utility. Uh, effective project management methodology, uh, that falls under the PMO. Unclear project scope and objectives. We felt that because of the work we did up front on the procurement, identifying all of the business requirements, we felt that that was uh, well done. And then uh, the project scope and objectives uh, also 
came out of that uh, initial uh, work in the procurement cycle. And there were some things that we missed. You know, our goal going in was not to have uh, too many program change requests, which are change in scope, budget, or timeline. Uh, we found out that uh, only uh, less than five were uh, related to business uh, requirements that uh, we missed during the procurement phase. Okay, next slide. Okay, on our next slide here, this is just uh, the design um, to a strong foundation. And you can see we started our executive steering committee over in 2011, and we talked a little bit about this research, the industry best practices. And um, as Pat alluded to, we hired a PMO manager that had done this several times before to work with us and guide us and um, put project teams together as well as very important piece, the organizational change management, which takes place every day on our project. And um, I think that, uh, you know, this, from this outline stemmed the growth of our organizational chart. Next slide. This is the PMO or the um, project management office with the steering committee at top um, and the executive sponsors, uh, Pat and myself, um, in the center and working through all of the challenges and day-to-day um, -day events with the teams. Okay, next. This is um, the onset during the design phase. Uh, Five Point helped us to design a what, um, what this project would look like based on all of the uh, roadmap that we developed through procurement and just what we would need out of um, the, the software and those people or lines of business that it would touch to assure that they were represented somewhere within our organizational chart. I'll give you a second to look at that. Yeah, and you'll see this was our, this was our first cut. This is probably version 20 of our first cut of our org chart. And later in this presentation, you'll see our current org chart, and, and uh, there's a significant difference. Right, and you know the important thing is when you design the organizational chart is to write up your roles and responsibilities. You're bringing a lot of people on that may not have worked on a project before, and you're bringing people on that have a specific role back in your business, which that role will change dramatically on a project. So role change and um, the understanding of that role is really important. So we worked uh, with our steering committee, our executive steering committee, on roles and responsibilities as well. And each of them had a role and responsibility along with the chair. Next slide. So you'll see uh, the bubbles on the outside of this slide represent the different areas of the business, the traditional utility business. And uh, what Vicki and I uh, described this project as a heart transplant and really that's what we're doing because the CCMB product is going to touch every aspect of our business and this just represents the broad scope of how large a project this is. Now typically you may only do a customer uh, billing system or a work management system, um, but rarely will you see them done together. In, in our uh, project, we were forced to replace them both because they were both in one system previously, and that system's being retired. And so this is a, just a representation of the impact and uh, magnitude. Okay. This is um, this is the design phase for CCMB. This was the initial the initial implementation piece for the team, and um, as you can see there more clearly, these were the areas, the functional business areas that we touched, and we had a lead for each of those areas um, to develop work streams. And you'll notice, you know, many of you out there may be looking at this as a technology project, 
the way that we've approached this, and, and you'll see throughout these slides, there are technical aspects of it, and there is a lot of technology going on. But I've referred to this as 90% business and 10% technology. The technology is proven. Uh, it's, it's well used in the industry. Really, the business decisions and the business involvement is going to be the most important part of your project. Next slide. Now this is going to surprise a lot of you. Um, this is our resource plan um, and it's an FTE count on the left axis. And we started out with uh, 11 people, 10 employees and one consultant. Um, and you can see how that, that grew um, over the uh, time of the project. Now, you can see the, the magnitude of the business involvement versus the technology involvement, and this is at an FTE level. Uh, and actually, this chart doesn't really represent the total numbers in our project. We're currently at 125 FTEs working on this project. Now, some of them roll on and roll off, and, and we, you know, they're not, um, not quite FTEs, uh, but the SMEs are very important as well. And this was quite surprising when we worked with Five Point back in procurement, and they brought uh, to our attention some of the um, resources needed and then when we did our demonstrations on products we got the same type of uh, plans and size of plans from the um, from uh, the different uh, software vendors and it was quite shocking to us we thought that it would take far less resources we found out today that's not true but um, if you get experts on your project that understand your business and the process you'll be successful. Next slide. So this is a scorecard uh, from Five Point uh, that was presented to the steering committee each month to show the, uh, the overall health of the project. And uh, this is a, uh, a good representation of the uh, key areas that you're going to want to pay attention to. And the arrows on the left, of course, we move those up and down through um, procurement and design as far as where are we at, um, are, are, are there areas where we've got to reference the steering committee because we've got some significant issues or um, risk that we need to make a decision. At all points that we're going through, through procurement and through design, to see just how large is this project, at the end of each steering committee meeting, we said, you know, do we have approval to move on? And I think that's really important because um, as some of the um, consultants can share with you, you get to design phase and it's overwhelming and um, there's a decision made that, you know, the scope, budget, and timeline just won't work for our company. So there are times when you've got to review that and make a decision. Now, just to, just to, to touch on the budget, um, our budget for this project Started out in the uh, in the 60 million dollar range, and um, we uh, we found that uh, that it was significantly more than that. Number one, number two, it took us almost a year to develop our budget. So, and we were pressured to to give numbers earlier than that. But but uh, my recommendation to you is to take time and. Uh, develop a budget that you believe that you can live within. So uh, the next, next slide. slide. On the design phase, um, you're going to pull many people together, and, and this is just a snapshot of our analysis workshops. We worked on our current state processes early on before our system integrators arrived. Uh, Five Point, of course, did the procurement and got us up to contract signing. And then we chose Oracle, Oracle and um, have a system integrator on that side. And Maxmo, we have a system integrator on uh, for that uh, part of our project as well. But we did a lot of pre-work um, prior to them arriving, which, you know, there again um, can offset some cost for you in building those current state process maps. 
Next slide. And I'll move a little more quickly. We've got several slides here, and we want to get through all of them so we can share our experience to date. And so here was our design phase best project. We named our project. We gave away an iPad. Uh, we came up with Project Compass, pointing in all directions, encompassing our entire business. Um, active leadership at the executive level all the time. When we gave away the iPad, there's an executive there. There's an executive promoting Project Compass across the business at the majority of time. You can see um, our first hire was a formal OCM training manager to get them embedded into the project early on so they would um, be able to pace through to the end and go live. And so uh, building up environments for success, we've got dedicated workspaces. We are off-site, which has been really uh, beneficial to our project. We've got a, a strong team concept. We include our integrators in every activity we have. We don't separate them out at any time, including for celebrations and, of course, lots of food. Next slide. Okay, now we're going to talk about the build phase of the project. You see on this map uh, the resources that we're using around the world. Uh, the the uh, importance of this slide is we are located in the upper left-hand corner of the uh, top map. But the uh, system integrators bring resources from all parts of the world to uh, participate. Now, many of those are remote, but many of those travel to our project site every week. And so as you are uh, considering and building your uh, budget, make sure to incorporate uh, the uh, travel costs that you will incur through the vendors. These resources are very uh, unique and specialized in their skills, and they do not all live right in our backyard. And um, one of the other things that your, your um, integrator may have a contract with their, their resources that they um, arrive on Monday and leave on Thursday, and you've got to plan, put all of that into your planning for your timeline because, you know, on the initial um, building of the budget, um, there is an opportunity for all of us to be naive and think that the resources will be here every day, and that is just not so. Um, and we found that in all of the um, of the integrators' contracts that, that we interviewed. And so um, there's a lot of invoicing and a lot of, uh, of review uh, for the budget every day, every week. Next slide. Okay, this, as I uh, referred to earlier, the initial organization chart, uh, this is the current organization chart. And you can see that we still have the structure of the steering committee and the uh, project sponsors, uh, but we do have a significant number of resources, and we've broken these down into functional areas. And when I talked about the uh, 11 project managers, that included the uh, system integrator project managers and the uh, VISTA project managers. And many of these are um, on all of, uh, of these titles below, there's roles and responsibilities to go along with um, all of them. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, here is a, another uh, project dashboard steering committee update. Uh, the uh, activities um, are the key activities that we monitor throughout the project. Uh, the status obviously shows the current status, and the trend is either uh, upwards, which is green, uh, neutral, which is yellow, or downward, which is uh, red. And so uh, it gives us an uh, opportunity to focus on those areas that need attention. And this was um, this dashboard we presented to the board of directors uh, of Avista early on, and this was in the um, coming out of the uh, procurement into the build stage, and now um, or the design, design phase. Right, the design phase, and now we've moved on into the build phase. So the next slide is um, this we referred uh, to. Uh, early on uh, about our organizational change management. 
we performed a stakeholder assessment and we talked about the importance of this. Pat mentioned several times that we put a lot of emphasis and focus on change management being that that was the key to our success. It's not about the software. We all know that. The software works well. It's about the approach that you take, the training time that you provide, and the outcome in the end when you deliver your bill to your customer. And so it was very important for us to focus on both operations on the Maximo side and customer service on the CTMB side, integrate the feedback that we were hearing along the procurement, the design, and the build phase, and continue throughout the project to meet with those key stakeholders. And this was all done by our OCM and training manager. And um, I think that you'll find that adding that person brings, uh, takes a lot of weight off the projects. Next slide. This is just, um, these slides aren't easy to see, but if you put your face real close to the screen, you'll be able to read them. And um, this just is an in-depth communication plan and timeline. And this is more internal. We are, um, in the last, six months we've been working with our corporate communication team to design an external communication plan as well. But you can see on this communication timeline down on the right-hand corner there that it's pretty extensive. And um, we have followed this throughout our, uh, throughout our plan and as our, pro uh, our progress takes place on our project. And up at the top, you can see external communication started July 9th of 2013. And, but we do have um, embedded in this the internal communication plan as well. The next slide, you'll see some of the important things. And we're going to show you some examples of communicate, communicate, communicate. That has been so important to us, both in staging um, auditorium meetings, brown bag lunches, uh, postcards, lunch and learns, and um, just uh, having our public SharePoint site open for directors, managers, and employees to go through and see the progress that we've made on Project Compass, as well as those things that we're planning for external communication. And um, you'll see more of that. <coughs> Next slide. This is just a copy of our postcard. We have March Madness here. And, uh, you know, we, as you all do, love those basketball games. So we just themed our postcard for March around March Madness as it did continue in our project. And this is something that's sent out monthly to every employee in the company via email. Next slide. So uh, we, we try to uh, uh, lighten things up as we go. Uh, along the project, and this once again, uh, this is an example of our organizational change management, and uh, it's uh, it's a way to uh, to communicate uh, in a different method. I think if you um, visited a Vista, and it wouldn't matter if you were in gas generation um, call centers, if you um, mentioned Project Compass. I would say that the majority of our employees understand the project and the timeline. Next slide. This is just a change impacts as we're moving um, through the build phase and moving into test. These were some of the uh, service container and service points, a little bit different from CSS, our legacy system, to CCMB, just a comparison of the old to the new. Okay, move to the next slide. And um, here's some of our best practices in this build uh, phase. And detailed budget, Pat talked about that earlier. Um, you know, if that budget, once you put the stake in the ground, becomes an iterative process, you've got problems. Uh, one of the things that uh, we did was have a contingency built within our budget, which was really important for project change, um, any project changes, and a formal um, way to fill out that project change request. And it got presented to the, um, to the PMO, our project management office, and had to have uh, approvals and 
it got immediately um, aligned with uh, the budget that we have on the project. And you can see through here we have monthly meetings, steering committee meetings, tailgates, uh, two days, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have <coughs> our um, budget meetings. We've got uh, issues and risk meetings. We've built uh, a workspace that has changed. Uh, we've had our facility department over here on several occasions where we had individual cubes when we started out, and now they're in somewhat bullpens next to each other with, uh, you know, laptops that they can move from bullpen to bullpen based on the project that, uh, area that they're working on. So lots of whiteboards, lots of food, and timely celebrations have been really important to keep the morale up. The next phase we're going to talk about is the testing phase of the project. So you can see uh, these are the different uh, test phases. System test is once the software is configured, you're just validating the core software is configured to meet your business needs. The system integration test is uh, important when you're sharing information amongst multiple systems. We have seven different systems that talk to uh, the system. We have our work management system, we have our uh, external web system, our IVR system, our financial system, our uh, working asset, or excuse me, our mobile system, and uh, the working asset management system. And so uh, very complex uh, system integration testing, and then uh, user acceptance testing, and that's probably the most important piece, and that's where, once again, the change management comes into play and you get users who are not on the project to come in and validate, and that lasts about 10 to 12 weeks. Next slide. This is the uh, testing defect tracking. Now, it's, it's very important as you're going through testing to uh, identify the severity. Uh, many, uh, many individuals that are not familiar with testing may identify everything as a critical bug, especially if it affects them directly. So you've got to uh, take time and educate people on different severities so you can classify the bugs appropriately so you can focus your development team in the right areas. Next slide. This is simply a uh, picture of the uh, testing software, uh, tracking software that we use. We call, uh, we used HP Quality Center, uh, also known as HP QC. And this gives you an idea of, uh, of the bug and the information that you'll capture and uh, the uh, resolution to the bug. So you have good uh, auditability against your, uh, your defects. Next slide. Okay, and on organizational readiness, and we've got this threaded throughout our presentation, again, managing the change. It's so important. If the people are ready, your project will be successful. And you can see at the top the organizational readiness and uh, the change management approach. This is continuing to gauge the temperature of the people, both on and off the project. You can, um, you know, offset a lot of uh, hard feelings, um, people not included, or um, just issues that go on on the project with that organizational change management role. Next slide. So in the, uh, next slide, there you go. Uh, in the uh, organizational change management, how will this affect me? So we, we listed what will change and what won't change. And so you can read through here you know, what will change, we're going to have a new computer system, new terminology in within the software, additional functionality, and some functionality taken away. Uh, navigation is going to be different. And uh, the business process changes are going to be different. We tried not to change a lot of business process changes, although the software being an industry standard has some natural business processes built into it that we tried to adapt and adhere to. And again, on this organizational change, um, that person was hired by Vista and is a full-time employee and has been on the project. Um, it, this is uh, pushed into their third year now. So what's not going to change, of course, are core values 
and um, the types of transactions we have, and the basic structure of our customer service area. Next slide. So this is really important to us. This is our flip chart, and it's our knowledge base, and it's everything that we have built into all of the processes that we use in the contact center as well as operations. And um, it's hard to see on the left-hand side, but it goes from environmental, forestry, mobile dispatch, uh, rates, reconnect, service work, telephone numbers that are handy to the customer service rep. And this is, going, this is being built by um, Mosaic, who is our training vendor. And they are building a web support system that's going to be integrated along with the Maximo um, support tool. And what we found is we can move back and forth from both systems. The users can, and it will be a very convenient way uh, for them to get information for their customer in a timely manner. And so <clears throat> you can see here down on the bottom, they've uh, got all their icons that they can move right between in this uh, support system. And the flip chart will be imported into our Mosaic uh, product. Next page. So here are some of the best practices around uh, testing and OCM. Uh, you've got to have a, uh, a good uh, test tracking software. HPQC is what we use. There's many others out there. Uh, we hired a Go Live manager, and a Go Live manager, their role is to be the gatekeeper for the go live decision. Now, obviously, Vicki and I will have the final say on whether we go or no go, but this this person has got a checklist of over a thousand uh, actions that they have to validate across the project to make sure each one's uh, done. Similar to uh, on a space launch, you've got someone checking each area before they say go. Uh, you know, the morale, you want to talk about the morale, Vicki? Yeah, and, and uh, once again, on that um, organizational change side, we are doing reward programs. We have a formal milestone reward program for our employees on Project Compass with recognition. We call it you rock. We've got some coins that look like poker chips, and if you catch somebody doing something uh, very successful on the project, you give them a you rock. Coin. And then we celebrate that at our core meetings, which we have once a month with everybody on the project. And then you can see this little trophy. We painted an old trophy gold and put a little baby shoe, tennis shoe on top of it because we knew we'd be running throughout the project. And this is called a step forward. Someone that moves the project a step forward, we award this once a month, and um, they, it, it continues on every month to go to the next step forward. Of course, we've had several road shows, and we talked earlier about uh, system demos, and we talk a lot about our timeline and our scope. You've got to update it, evaluate it, adjust it, and um, that all takes time as well as approval through your executive steering committee on through your project management office. Next. So finally, we're going to talk about the production support uh, piece of the project. So uh, we have uh, we we started about uh, a year ago uh, developing and defining our support organization for the first launch of our uh, generation production work management system, and so that's been in place now for uh, almost a year, coming up in October. Uh, the the other areas of support. Um, we uh, are establishing our, both our internal uh, business analysts who will be um, working on the business side and our technology support that will be working on the technology side. And, and the one key thing here is we must work as one. It can't be two separate units. So we've, we've embedded a lot of the technology activities that traditionally were done in the IT group are now being done in the business because the software allows for the business to configure and change things 
uh, without the need for the business. And you can see on the um, CCMB side, these are benefits for both of our employees and our customers as well. And um, this product is going to make life a lot easier if you're in the call center or you're out on the road um, taking service orders. So next slide. So this is, you know, the beginning of our journey, and we've got next phases that um, of things that we want to do as soon as we go live and stabilize our system. We've got a whole list of things that we'd like to add on and, and improve. But when we went into this project, we said uh, what is is what will be. And the only way to embellish that is if it's ease of implementation within the project. So we've stayed the course trying to keep our timeline as firm as possible. And you all know, on that budget timeline and scope, it's shaken that crystal ball, that eight ball, and hopefully you come up with the right answer at the onset because every day, every week, things change in our, product envir or in our project environment. So we're still um, traveling down the road um, on our journey, and uh, last quarter of this year, is our proposed go live. So you can, next slide. We did have a little perk along the way. Um, we had a great article in Intelligent Utility. The author uh, of this um, Intelligent Utility uh, article was very creative, and it's a fun article. If you haven't read it, um, it will give you a little better feel for the slides that um, we just went through. And lastly, we are at question and answer. So I'll let the um, team pick it up from here. Okay. Uh, what a great job. Uh, you can tell you guys have been a little bit busy uh, for a while. So uh, great presentation, very informative. Uh, we do have a couple questions that's come, that have come in. Uh, we are kind of pressed for time, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and roll out these questions, and if you could uh, answer them and uh, make them somewhat brief if you can. Uh, first question is, um, the CIS replacement projects are traditionally perceived as major undertakings. How did you get buy or get the buy-in buy -in throughout a VISTA to start Project Compass? Well, as Pat talked to early on, um, we talked about replatforming our existing uh, legacy system. And with the actual budget and timelines we presented to the officers, we had a consultant come in and review, and we were advised to invest the dollars and the time in the actual project instead of replatforming. And so that was our jump off point. Great. Okay. Um, what mobile dispatch system? Do you use with CCNB and Maximo, and is it still Advantix? It is. Uh, it is still. We we chose not to replace that as part of the project, um, just to keep the scope within check, and so we are integrated to our current uh, Advantix solution. All right. What advice do you have for other utilities? that are in the process of building the business case for replacing their legacy CIS system? Well, first of all, plan well in advance. Visit other companies that are about your same size and build a set of questions for them. That was really important for us. We visited probably four uh, physically and talked to several on the phone about what went well and what didn't go so well. Um, you know, another thing that's very important is getting officer buy-in and commitment and appoint an officer chairperson to the steering committee. Um, start early on and build the current state process maps. I talked about those in the presentation. Um, this can save on expenses. You can build a, we built a guidebook inclusive of roles and responsibilities for each person on the project. Our schedules, our current state mapping, our organizational change management our roadmap and our communication and resource list are all things um, that uh, we took on at the onset of the project. Have an O&M budget at the onset, and then you'll um, transition over to your capital budget once you sign your SOWs and um, 
have a great leadership team kick off and plan the journey ahead. Okay. Uh, our final question for today, because we're running out of time. What is next after Project Compass? Well, we have uh, we have Project Compass. Uh, you know, when you do a project of this magnitude, you never really complete it, and so there's always additional things. And in our case, we have, uh, for example, customer preferences that we want to uh, focus on post go live. We also have uh, a new uh, outage management system that we're considering. Uh, replacing a uh, distribution management system uh, we're considering replacing. We've got uh, uh, a website that's now uh, aging and uh, although it, it ranks uh, in the top uh, of the JD Powers, it is uh, time to provide more functionality through that site for our customers. So there's a number of projects out there uh, it, you know, to be honest, it seems like it's never ending. Yeah, and it, you know, um, I think there's um, probably one more question out there, and that's the the lifespan of our new system. And you know, we're naive enough to think it's ext it's eternal because it's an off the shelf product, and it'll just continue to evolve. But um, you know, we this legacy system was 20 years, and we sure hope we get another 20 years. Uh, you don't want to be doing these projects every year, I'll tell you. They're very encompassing. Well, very good. All right, well, I'm showing it's uh, near the top of the hour. Um, if your question was not answered, uh, Lisa Collins with our CS Week office will forward the questions to our presenters and uh, we'll follow up with you uh, after that. At this time, we want to thank our presenters. We want to take. Uh, we want to thank uh, Vic Vicki and Pat. Uh, excellent job. Well done again. Uh, it was a great presentation. And at this point in time, uh, I want to remember, uh, remind you to sign up for CS Week. Uh, that is about two weeks away and I want to see you in San Antonio. So, uh, again, thank you for being on our webinar, and this concludes the webinar for today.